Hi everyone, in this video we're going to use our knowledge of the reactivity series to understand displacement reactions. So if you haven't yet seen my video of the reactivity series, I'll put a link up to that one now. I suggest you watch that one first. So let's get on and look at some displacement reactions. We're going to have a look at some displacement reactions now and I'm using this dimple tray so I can carry out lots of reactions at the same time between different reactants. So I've already prepared it with copper sulfate on the top row, the blue solution. This orangey coloured solution is iron sulfate. Then we've got colourless zinc sulfate and colourless magnesium sulfate. And in each column I'm going to put a different metal. So the first column I'm going to put a piece of copper in each solution. The second column, I'm going to put a piece of iron. In this case, it's a small iron nail. In the third column, we need a piece of zinc. And then in the fourth column, we're going to put a small piece of magnesium. And we're going to be looking out for any signs of a chemical reaction, whether that's bubbling, colour change, maybe steam or smoke being given off, any changes like that to see if there's a chemical reaction. So we're going to come back to that in a few minutes to see what's happened. It's now had a few minutes to react. I should say that all of the equipment I'm using today, including all of the chemicals, is available from Philip Harris. And there's a link to the Philip Harris website in the description below my video. So we can see that some of them have very clearly reacted with colour changes. Looks like parts are even started to disintegrate. Another nice colour change there. But some of the reactions, absolutely nothing's happened. But that's still valid information that will tell us something about reactivity. So we're going to have a look at now what we can deduce from these different results. When we looked at those reactions in the dimple tray, some of them reacted and some of them didn't react. So let's start off with one that reacted. So when we put a piece of magnesium in with copper sulfate, there was a definite reaction. So the magnesium is taking the sulfate from copper to make magnesium sulfate and copper. We say the magnesium displaces the copper and that's because magnesium is a more reactive metal higher up the reactivity series. Let's look at another example, zinc and iron sulfate. There was also a reaction and that's this time because zinc is more reactive than iron. So that takes the sulfate from iron to form zinc sulfate and it leaves iron on its own. So once again, the zinc has displaced the iron. Now let's look at one that didn't react. If we put a piece of copper with magnesium sulfate, there would be no reaction. And that's because copper is less reactive than magnesium. So it can't take the sulfate, it can't displace magnesium and therefore there's no reaction. We can use this knowledge to predict if there would be a reaction. So let's look at the first question. What would be made if a piece of magnesium was placed in iron sulfate? Well, the first thing we do is see where the metals are in the reactivity series. And magnesium is higher than iron, so that tells us magnesium is more reactive than iron. So in this case, magnesium can take the place of iron. It can displace iron. So we would get magnesium sulfate and iron is left on its own. Let's look at another example. What would happen if a piece of iron is placed in zinc sulfate solution? Well, this time zinc is more reactive than iron. So iron tries to take the sulfate from zinc. It tries to displace zinc, but in this case, it can't. It cannot displace zinc, so there would be no reaction. And that's because iron is less reactive than zinc. We're going to use our knowledge of the reactivity series and displacement reactions to predict what will happen in this reaction. This reaction is called the thermit reaction and it's between aluminium and iron oxide. Now aluminium is more reactive than iron, it's higher up the reactivity series, so the aluminium is able to take the oxygen away from the iron. We say it displaces the iron, so that will form aluminium oxide and that will leave iron on its own. So at the end of the reaction, we should see a red hot lump of iron. 
This is what the reactants look like. The red powder is the iron oxide. The gray powder is the aluminium powder. And you'll notice we've got a fuse here made out of magnesium ribbon. That's going to provide the activation energy to get the reaction started. So the first thing we'll see when it reacts is the bright white light of the magnesium ribbon, and that's providing the energy to start the rest of the displacement reaction. So here we go, we'll light the magnesium ribbon. Then I need to very quickly get out of the way because it's quite a vigorous reaction. So now the main reaction is happening. This is the displacement reaction between aluminium and iron oxide. The aluminium being the more reactive metal is displacing the iron. It's a very exothermic reaction once we've provided that activation energy to get it started. And there we can see the piece of red hot iron. Now that it's had the oxygen taken away from it, that red iron oxide powder has turned into a lump of iron. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a like. And also remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.